I hope you're ready for the big show. Because we're going to go in hard. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to part 32 of Pokemon Sword. So last time, we made it partway through Route 9, only to discover that we now have the ability to cross the water. So we were all like, screw Route 9, and now we're just going to be all like, uh, hey, this is Route 9 now. <laughs> so now we're for real going to go through Route 9 after discovering what we could do now that we've had water mode installed into our Rotom bike. So let's do this thing. Let's test out our new let's test out our new buddy Go Lurk and see what it can do. Right, so let's see. Once again, Golurk has served me very well in the past, and I believe it can serve you very well too. Since ground because Golurk's physical attack is like up there with some of the Unova Pokemon out there. So, yes. And you got Blossom. You can actually find Gloom out in the wild area. And by now, if you've been using the same service list like Digging Duo and finding hidden items, then you should have no problem finding a Sunstone so you can evolve Gloom into Blossom. And let me tell you something. Blossom has saved my life. Like, it took down a freaking Garchomp man once. One of my Blossoms that I've had took down a freaking Garchomp man. I mean, it was definitely a double battle I think I had, but... Man, it was good. It was really good. <laughs> but anyway, none of that's none of that story stuff is very important because we just want to talk about video games. Surchester Bay has Manti Mantines or Mantines, whichever one you prefer. And it's got this lovely adorable Galar creature. Grapple locked. Despite what you might think, this is a water and fighting. This is a fighting. Well, I'll see whenever it. No. Well, there's one for the books. Once again, Snom. Snom dies, but for the sake of friendship. Once again, Snom dies. But for the sake of friendship, we got a big pearl. Got a Wilmo over there. We got a pearl string over here. And we got an ice stone over there. Most of these items you can find in the wild area anyway. Plus, it's way more expansive anyway to just go over here. So, there you go. There it is. A Clobopus. This is Grappalock's pre-evolved form, so it's probably more recommended that you go after Clobblepuss first before you try your attempt at catching a Grappalock. And there we go. Now we can learn what type it is. Because I sure as hell don't know what it is. That's like not a lot of experience, man. It's a fighting type. It's very curious, but its means of investigating things is to try to punch them with its tentacles. The search for food has always brought it onto land. Hmm, okay. Well, I've been getting a lot of fight fighting types lately, so I'll try to slow down on it. Never melt ice. Oh! Hey! Club of... I, okay. Okay. No. Why? Did you have to show up? Like right now, and why does Snow have to die again? Never mind! Snow, I'm your champion! Oh, okay, we can find a Barbarical over here. So there are many different ways that you can go in uh, Surchester Bay. And you can stop by Stefan's, or Stefan's, uh, Pokemon camp. Here's got a Gothitel, Riolu, Lucario, Growlithe, and Arcanine. Which you can find Growlithe in the wild area, by the way. He's got a Boltund. You have mostly the dogs. 
Good afternoon. To put simply, brave is it hates to lose. <laughs> well, it does hate to lose. Hi, Snum. Hey, Growly. Hey, Pupper. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> well, I, I just can't help it. I, I like Snum. Snum is life. Another rare candy? God. We've been getting, like, so many of these, like, rare candies that it's starting to pile up real good. Witness the results of the training I did together with my Pokemon. Once again, we have a different trainer class. We got Reese here. And he's got a sock. So Black Belts generally use fighting type Pokemon. And Sock just so happens to be one of them. Uh, we will see how it pits against our own Sock. Besides, we have the better name. We have Socky Good. So let's actually do a little bit of a counter battle. Let's see. What can we do about the counters? Oh, we go. Oh my god. We tried to counter that counter, but it failed. Miserably. Oh yeah, you're going to use Lil Sweep. Awesome. And now my speed is dead. Which is actually really good because... Uh... Osaka Good is down. Unfortunately. We just had to wait a little bit. Because we weren't really doing anything good. Because I don't I don't actually want to counter battle this time. No thank you. So we're going to bulldoze. And just be done with it. Heck yeah. I mean heck. Nani gets the experience. So that's okay. That's alright. That's okay. Oh you got another. Okay you got another Mon. The Buster got to level 45. Yeah, I lost. Looks like I need more training. Ow. I need some training, mates. Ooh, wow. Yeah, Searches of Bay is surprisingly a very big place. With plenty of items to find. Including that Max Revive that we got. Oh. God, i glad I'm got I got that over with. Gonna get this item, a black belt, which which boosts the power of fighting type moves. And you're not required in any given way, so I'ma skip you, Mr. Carter. Level ups all around. Hot buns to level 45, King Ramses to 44, Nani to 43, and Fluffy to 44. To use four moves, that's all it should take. Well, that grapple lock of yours really did help a lot with the training I did. Uh, you're a trainer class that we haven't seen yet, but we won't get to you just yet. Because I want to get to my topic for today. You know, eventually. That's a dangerous one. TM22 Rock Slide. So that can make the opposing Pokemon flinch, and it hits both in a double battle, so good stuff. There's a swimmer. Uh, let's see. What is there? Yeah, again, very big place the uh, Sir Chester Bay is. And I bet I'll get sniped by a trainer. So, uh, wow, there's like no items here. Yeah, once again, and surprisingly, there is a lot of non-required battles that you can do. So, I'll probably fight most of these trainers off screen. Ooh, one more item and then we'll actually get to our topic for today. Protector! So if you have a Rhydon and you make that Rhydon hold the Protector, and if you trade it, it'll evolve into Rhyperior. So yeah, an, a, one of the Gen 4, one of the amazing Gen 4 starter, or one of the Gen 4 essentials, aka a Pokemon that really deserved an evolution 
or it didn't deserve an evolution, but it did anyway, and Rhyperior is cool. That's my name for it. Like, I, I trademark it. I, I coin it, I flip it, and I'm done with it. There's a Toxapex over there and an Octillery, which is cool. But now I want to get into my main topic for today. <laughs> I've been waiting a whole I've been waiting a whole millennium to unload onto onto the really loud fans for this because they're stupid. And this is all coming from like my review that's totally coming. Even though this Let's Play will probably serve as, like, a review anyway, because it goes way into the game. It goes, like, deep. It's a deep dive into the video game, basically. But I want to talk about gaming companies today. I want to talk about gaming companies today that, well are far worse than Game Freak, which has done absolutely nothing other than make a video game. So remember, I've been wanting to talk about this for an incredibly long time, and now my chance has finally come. Right, so we learned from last time that we did this, that we talked about this. We understand that Game Freak had to cut out, cut out, you know, most of the Pokemon in order for higher quality visuals. And, you know, for the most part, the visuals are a little bit more higher quality. They definitely serve more as a handheld only, handheld only game. And while looking at it from docked mode, it doesn't look as good or doesn't look as appropriate. I've already stated my pieces on how this game looks looks good not great but good and we've also discovered and we also discussed that you know game freak only cut out the pokemon because there are there are well over 1000 pokemon models if you count the 300 and 893 pokemon that are in the pokemon universe now doesn't include forms or Dynamax forms, or Gigantamax forms, or regional variants, or any of the, or gender differences, or gender forms, or whatever else. So we've established that there are well over a thousand plus Pokemon models, and having them in this one game is absolutely insane. We don't know why they couldn't use all the Pokemon. We don't know how how much how much time this took to develop we don't know if like the behind the scenes stuff over at game freak is apparently bad blood or whatever else all we know is that quillfish's poison point is going to kill me and i really need some special attackers like right the second so we've established at this point that the only controversy that the that the game freak has done is cut out the models. Nothing more than that. There's been no reports of anything having really to do with bad stuff happening at Game Freak. So that's fair. But you know, the fan base likes to call it lazy because you know because, you know, all that good stuff, the game doesn't look as good, or they cut out the models and they don't have any effort anymore, so therefore Game Freak is a bad, and you should feel bad for supporting them. And even if you do support them, you're supporting the enemy, the enemy of my people. It's like, with this game, no matter what, if you, if you despise this game, then you're amongst the crowd of negativity. If you like this game, uh, you're going to be all like, uh, everyone's going to be like, uh, shill. I can't believe you're a shill. Why, why would you defend such a horrible company? Well, that's what I'm here to talk about to you today. So, you all know the incredible, memorable game that is Pokemon Sword and Shield, right? How 
you know, you can make like well over two hours of videos talking about how much you don't like the game. And you know what? If you don't like the game, that's very fair. But don't go after the people, don't go after the companies that make the game. Because that is stupid. And you wonder why I'm talking about this? Because literally all this game did was cut out Pokemon models. So uh, let's talk about some things that other gaming developers and or publishers did. Because trust me, it, no matter what you think, no matter what I say, you all know that Game Freak is going to be far worse. So let's think. Let us actually think for one moment. Let's actually think here for a second. And let me actually heal up my Pokemon for a second because uh, I'm going to have a double battle waiting for me. Everyone has already forgiven Blizzard Entertainment because... Uh, oh, wow. These are not a battle. Okay. Okay, cool. So you find a secret beach and you get TM45. Dive. Okay. Cool. The move dive. Your Pokemon will be hitting attacks when they dive into water. Well, okay. And over here you get three dive balls. Everyone has already forgiven the company Blizzard Entertainment. Well, everyone has already forgiven them because, you know, Diablo 4 is being marketed right now. And Overwatch 2 is being in development right now. And everybody loves Di and people like Diablo and Overwatch. Well, uh, you know the model, Every Voice Matters. Well... What if I were to tell you that Blizzard Entertainment banned a Hearthstone player for saying his political beliefs and now everyone jumped on him and then they st and then even then Blizzard st stood by their decision despite the fact that they said that every voice matters. And that caused like a huge controversy for like a while and it even and when even Nintendo like canceled an Overwatch event over this because Overwatch is on the Nintendo Switch you know you screwed up, but instead of apologizing to him, they stuck to their guns. So, that's already a no. So, what did Game Freak do? Cut out Pokemon. That's all. Our next example is Konami. You already know how bad Konami is. They fired Kojima. And after Metal Gear Solid V was finally released, Kojima got... Kojima left and went on to create Death Stranding with his own company. And now they're like pachinko machines and pro evolution soccer instead of creating quality products. I mean, they've definitely re-released, gotten the rights to re-release their games and even allowed Snake in. So I suppose that's probably like the least of your awardees. But still, they are basically, like, non-existent for new games for some reason, except for Pro Evolution Soccer and Pachinko Machines. And apparently whatever's going on with the Silent Hill series is not very good. <laughs> and one of the greats, Metal Gear Solid 3, has HD cutscenes only viewable via Pachinko Machine. What brain-headed decision decided to do that? And... They let Metal Gear die in a coffin. And what did Game Freak do? All they did was cut out models. That's all. Our next example is Bethesda. Because, uh, wow. <laughs> wow, 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 we. How could they still let Fallout 76 exist? I've heard tales of how bad the game's launch was. Like... How it's basically all empty, and I'm not sure what the state of the game is now, but I feel like every decision that they make with Fallout 76 is just really bad. Like, I made a shitpost video about this. I made a shitpost about this. Like, it's filled with glitches. It's filled with, like, glitches. Well, to be expected, and... I really thought, like, the beta would would give them time to fix it. But no, it was released the same year as the beta, and I don't understand why. And, you know, it's empty. None of the enemies are interesting. 
like, I, again, I'm not sure what the state of the game is now, but the game's launch is just something you'll never, ever forget. Ever. For being a terrible, terrible launch. What did Game Freak do? Cut out models. You know, that, that old thing. You know, I, and, you know, they, they you know, they're, 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 they, they, they're the worst. They cut out models. But, you know, are they as bad as Rockstar Games with Red Dead Redemption 2? Uh, remember when Game Freak didn't force their employees to work 100 plus hours to make sure that their really, really huge game really, really works? And despite the incredible reception that Red Dead Redemption 2 obviously had, and I really can't wait to play Red Dead Redemption 2, the fact that crunch time was even a thing at Rockstar was a very, very, very bad thing. What did Game Freak do? You know what they did. You absolutely know what they did. What Game Freak did. Cut out models. That's all. And finally, we have the cornerstone of everything. EA. <laughs> this is all from my script, by the way. This is all from my review script. So you get a little bit of a sneak peek. Remember how Neo Battlefront 2 went with all the loot boxes and whatnot? The loot box system was really, really bad. And the fact that loot boxes even existed in that game was like controversial enough as it was for the Battlefront series. Like, this was their chance to redeem themselves, and they didn't even go through with that. I played the Battle... I played the first uh, Battlefront version, and it wasn't very good. It was fun, but... But, ultimately, you're just doing the same thing. And Battlefront 2 just, like, did stuff. I mean, Battlefront 2 did some crazy, crazy stuff with the loot boxes and everything. Uh, do you remember the high-budget game of FIFA 2020 that had really bad bugs in the career mode that took nearly a month to fix compared to a glitch in Pokemon X and Y, which is the modern-era Pokemon games that took only two weeks? And you know what I'm talking about, the Lumio City save bug. You know what I was talking about. And do you remember in FIFA 2020 when the Global Series sign-up featured other players' personal information? Do you remember a time when Pokemon did that? Uh, before you answer, no! Absolutely not! What did Game Freak do? They cut out the models, you know? They, they really cut out the models. And, y you know, y y you can complain about that. You can complain about, you know, all the, uh... All the, the quote-unquote bad things that Game Freak obviously did. Like, like, reusing assets, even though... Reuse ad sets have been a thing in video games before. Like, do you remember my favorite video game, Majora's Mask? Yeah, that's basically a sequel to Ocarina of Time that reused models and assets from Ocarina of Time. You know, that's all, that's all, you know. Games reuse assets all the time. So why are you freaking complaining about some reuse assets in Pokemon Sword and Shield? Why is that not okay? Drill Run is, really, is a really good move. I'm going to forget a uh, Metal Claw for that. But why is Game Freak the one being hunted down for reusing assets? Why why is that even a thing? Why is that even a complaint? I don't understand. Game Freak is not a terrible company because they released a because you know they, they because you know they released a B plus of a game. And and there are a lot worse examples out there. Like, ooh, Project Cyberpunk's Cyberpunk 2077. That launch was terrible. <laughs> that launch was terrible. It had bugs, poorly optimized PS PS4 and Xbox One versions. Where I hear the uh, PS5 and uh, Xbox Series versions aren't really so bad, but the damage is done. There are a lot of bugs in there. Uh, there are a lot of bugs out there. You, you, the the base PS4 and Xbox One versions need like an update and constant updates for optimizations, where they really should have just delayed the game. Uh, even, even, even later to just fix everything, but they didn't, they didn't know what they were doing. So, and they're taking their time to fix everything, but absolutely not. Absolutely. Game Freak's the one being hounded and it just never, ever, ever. I can't, I can't enter Spike Myth. So I've been just hanging around here this whole time. No one can tell it's the dark type leader like this. What's with the gaping shut? 
How am I supposed to get my gym badge now? Hey, Charlie. I'm pretty sure Cyberpunk 2077 has is like a good game all on its own, but... God! Why do we complain about Sword and Shield being like the worst of a really good franchise when... When Pokemon Diamond exists! <laughs> and other pretty bad Pokemon game spinoffs exist. I was born here, so I know another way in. If you want to get into the town, how about if I show you the way? But you are my rival, so you have to beat me in a battle first. Got it? Hell yeah! Actually, let me think about it. Oh, did I misjudge you? Ah, I get it. You need to get ready. Go on then. I'll wait here until you're ready. Oh god, please don't let me go. To the <laughs> god damn it! God damn it, Jealous! Why did you have to? Why did the game have to boot me over here? <laughs> okay, okay. That, that that was uh that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. Yeah, Jealous! <laughs> but God. Do we really, really need to keep complaining? Just move on! Move on! Christ! I didn't even bother reading... I didn't even bother reading the uh, Pokedex entry because I'm just so mad at the... I'm just legitimately angry at the fan base for keeping on just complaining and complaining and complaining about this game when it's not broken, it's functional, it's not terrible! I mean, it might be terrible within the series. You know, if you don't like it, that's completely fine. But if you just keep complaining about it, I'm sorry. I am going to unload on you. I will unload. I have no mercy. I've been waiting to do that for like almost two years. And now I get to do it. Just let everything out. Just let everything out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my review will be more, like, based on that, which I'm probably still going to do, but Jesus Christ. And even nowadays, you still see shades of stupidity within the within the Pokemon community. Like, they'll believe anything. Like, if a new game gets announced, they're going to hate it. Um, just whatever. I don't, I don't freaking care anymore. Anyway, see you guys on next, see you guys on next time whenever we fight Marnie and see if we can go into Spike Meth. See you guys on next time. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Post a comment in the description, and I and if you're Hayden, I will I will slap you. Just remember, be nice to one another. And if you aren't, I will find you. <laughs> I will find you.